What's up, y'all? Paul from uh, Grindhouse Funhouse. How are you doing tonight? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're uh, healthy and safe. I am both of those things right now. So, uh, yeah, back with uh, another video for my movie collection, Library Shelves Overview series. This is uh, shelf number six. Shelf number six. Last one I did was uh, a month and a day ago. So I thought it was too long, too long of a, a wait in between the two. So now I'm doing another one. And uh, let's start this up right now. First one on the docket, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, the Criterion Collection version, the DVD of it. Uh, Terry Gilliam, the movie is about Hunter S. Thompson, gonzo journalist. Uh, starring Johnny Depp and Benicio Del Toro. Um, I, I'll tell you how much I love this movie. I fell asleep at least four or five times on it and I haven't tried to rewatch it since. So uh, so that tells you how much I, I enjoyed that movie. I actually prefer uh, the Bill Murray version. You know, the one with uh, Where the Buffalo Roam, where uh, Hunter S. Thompson, I actually, he actually got to hang out with him before the, you started the movie, so that was pretty cool. So yeah, you're loading, there you go. Right here, Fearless, Jeff Bridges, uh, Peter Weir movie. It's a, a movie about the uh, near-death experience. Jeff Bridges is uh, comes out of a plane crash, feels pretty much invincible. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's pr actually pretty damn good. I, I saw this in theaters low these many years ago, back in 1993, I believe. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a really good, really good movie. There you go. Then we have Fear of a Black Hat. Kind of like um, a comedy a la CB4 kind of type thing. Uh, uh, a rap group trying to make it big, and uh, I, th I believe uh, Uder, Rusty Cundiff uh, directed this, and he also did the the movie. What was it? The anthology. Well, I'm blanking on right now. You know, you know the one. I'm coming up. I'm looking at it right now. I'm I'm blanking. Well, yeah, that one. So, so it's pretty good. It's uh, they they used to do a lot of those. There's at least four or five at the beginning of the early '90s of those parodies of those rap groups. And uh, I think CB4 is one of the most famous ones, but uh, there you go. Then we have Femme Fatale, Brian De Palma. Um, I have not actually seen this one. It's a, a later entry in the, in the late 90s, I believe, uh, with uh, Antonio Banderas, and Rebecca Romain. Um, I don't know, I haven't seen it. Have you seen it? Because uh, I feel like I, I should have gone there's a, a few of his movies I have yet to, to check out, and then that's one of them. So yeah, Femme Fatale right here. Up next, classic 80s, Ferris Bueller's Days Off. And I also have this copy right here, uh, both of these copies. I bought this one because there's the, uh, the uh, commentary from um, Mr. John Hughes, where he's on this one. And it's on this one right here. So commentary with John Hughes, that's the only one he's ever done for any movie of his. So yes, there you go, Ferris Bueller's Days Off. Up next, The Fifth Element, Luc Besson, Bruce Willis, Gary Oldman. Uh, that too I saw in theaters, low these many years ago. I need to rewatch this because uh, I remember being uh, pretty dope and I probably need uh, you know, a good Blu-ray of this because uh, yeah. Fifth Element, up next, a canon film, 50-50, a uh, kind of like a buddy, buddy movie, Peter Weller, Robert Hayes, I believe this was in 1989, 88, 89, 93, well, I was, <laughs> I was way off, so yeah, it's, uh, I think they're in, um, in, like in the jungle somewhere, they're recruited by the CIA, and they go on some sort of mission, and uh, you know, Wackiness ensues. So yeah, there you go. 50-50. Then we have classic 90s Fight Club. The DVD version. 
I have yet to buy the, the Blu-ray of this one, but uh, I feel like everyone had has this in their collection. They don't have the Blu-ray. That was like the main, the main version to get. I don't need to tell you much about Fight Club because we don't need to talk about Fight Club because you already know about Fight Club right here. Up next, an erotic thriller from the early 90s. Final analysis, Richard Gere, Kim Basinger, where she uh, she does get naked in this movie. It is pretty nice, pretty nice. Phil Joannou did this movie and he directed uh, uh, Rattle and Hum, the U2 documentary in the late 80s. So there you go. How about some sci-fi? Fire in the Sky, based on a true story, didn't you know? Uh, <laughs> they'll adoption uh, in the White Mountains of Northern Arizona. And uh, I feel this one is, it's uh, very underseen and uh, it's really well done. Like the, the special effects, the, the scenes toward the end when he gets uh, abducted and that scene, oh my God, it's, it's still good to this day, like 27 odd years later. So if you've never seen this one and you're into alien abduction movies, um, Fire in the Sky is a go-to. Check it out. Up next, something I got recently from Kino Lorber. It's fire, fire, fire Power. Sophia Loren, James Coburn, O.J. Simpson. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's a Michael Winner film. Michael Winner, Death Wish, and other crazy action movies from the 80s. Uh, James Coburn in this is suave as fuck. He's so good. And uh, what, you got O.J. Simpson in there, pre-murders. Uh, it's a nice you know, slice of 70s action. It's worth checking out. It is worth checking out. All right. Up next, some more canon. Firewalker, Chuck Norris, Lou Gossett Jr. Another buddy comedy in the 80s. Kind of a mix of, uh, I don't know, Indiana Jones, Jewel of the Nile, with like uh, funny, funny banter, you know. But uh, it's it's all right, you know. It's not it's not it's not the ha. <clears throat> I would put this really low in the, in the Chuck Norris's film canon, you know. It's not at one of his best, but being a Norris fan, I had to get it. So there you go, Fire Walker. Up next. Ooh, why are you slight? There you go. I don't know. All right, Flash Gordon. Uh, I, I have not seen this one. I want to actually now have a, a good reason to because they just announced, announced a 4K uh, version of this. I don't know which company is releasing it. I'm sure one of you knows out there, but it recently got uh, announced. Um, I, I must check it out. I want to. It looks bonkers, and I like those kind of movies, so there you go, Flash Gordon right here. Up next, the true version of that movie, Flatliners, Kiefer, Julia, Kevin. Again, another one of those movies where I actually saw in theaters, because I am that old. I am that old. But uh, yeah, people, students trying to, you know, induce death, and then uh, wacky shit happens because, you know, they played with they played with fire, and when you play with fire, that's what happens. So yeah, there you go, Flatliner right here. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it is Arrow, actually. You are correct. Thank you for correcting me. Up next, Fletch, Chevy Chase. Probably one of his best movies, right? I would say there. And one of my personal favorites, obviously Christmas Vacation, and Memoirs of an Invincible Man. I know it gets a little bit shit on, but I think it's a pretty good movie for Chevy and John, maybe a lesser John Carpenter, but a good movie for Chevy Chase. But yeah, it's one of his uh, most well-known comedies and one of his best. And uh, look at this, uh, I don't know if you can see it. Let me take a look at the cover right here. So there you go. Up next, we got some Seagal. Fire Down Below. Um, I have, have I seen this movie? <laughs> if I have, it's been a while, but I feel it was in his, um, his like environmental phase when he like directed On Deadly Ground. Like it was like, like he's trying to like 
tell us a message about saving the environment. I think it's one of those two as well. There's, uh, you know, towards the end of his, uh, you know, when he started to make lesser movies, that's probably one of the last one where it was actually sort of good. So there you go. Up next, an arrow video of uh, Forbidden Zone. Welcome to the sixth dimension. It's a movie with uh, Danny Elfman is in this, I believe, and his brother. Uh, a, a musical of some kind. Uh, this was a blind buy, a blind buy I have yet to put my eyes on, so it will be for later on. Up next, a Michael J. Fox comedy for love or money, where he plays a concierge in New York City. And uh, concierge being that he could get anything any, any, that anybody wants, be it drugs, <laughs> hookers, cigars, what have you. Uh, I think it's one of, a, of his lesser known comedies. I really enjoy it, uh, but I'm a fan of Michael J. Fox. So it's, you know, pretty much like everything he's done in the 80s and the 90s. So there you go. One of the Apatow movies, uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Um, that was directed by, I believe, it was it like Nicholas Stoller. Uh, I think that was like the, the discovery of, uh, what's his face, Jason Siegel. The memory I have of this movie is that the very first time I was in South by Southwest, I think it was it 2008, 2009, 2008. Uh, the very first, like I get off the plane and I go directly to the movie theater that's showing the world premiere of this and the whole cast was there and it was pretty cool and uh, that's the memory I have of this movie. So there you go. Up next, we have Paul Newman in Fort Apache, The Bronx. Um, <clears throat> I believe it's one of those uh, people revolting in the streets. It sounds vaguely familiar right now. It's a, in a hostile territory. Um, I got this for uh, Pam Greer. Pam Greer has a small role in this, I believe. And, um, and I, I can't wait to check it out. Plus, it's in the Bronx, in New York City, in the early 80s. My favorite time uh, in New York City. A time I wish I would have seen with my own eyes, but you know, sadly, it was not to be. Up next, Four Rooms. I believe this was the movie right after Pulp Fiction. Uh, the four like short films with uh, directed by Alison Anders, uh, Alexandre Rockwell, Robert Rodriguez, and Quentin Tarantino. Um, I have not. I, I have not seen this one. I should get on that, especially for uh, Quentin and Robert. But uh, yeah, if you've seen this, uh, you can let me know how good it is or not. Up next, Frank and Weenie, The Steel Book. This is the second or third short film by Tim Burton, which he turned into a full-length feature back in uh, 2012. So yeah. You go right here. You can see the uh, is a dog, but yeah, it's really good. Uh, the talent was already there for Mr. Burton in that short film. Then we have Freaked, which I saw for the first time recently. I can't believe it's. I should have seen this 27 years ago, <laughs> but uh, no, I saw this like a month ago. Uh, Alex Winter directing this. Uh, really weird stuff. Um, and I know that this Blu-ray is uh, way out of print, goes for a crazy amount of money. Hopefully they'll release, they'll do a reprint of some kind, but uh, yeah, it's a really weird one. And um, I can't, can't remember the name of the, he had a MTV channel, MTV uh, network series. Fuck, what's the name of it right now? I can't, I, like, I'm blanking right now, but uh, uh, yeah, it's really, really out there, but really fun. So there you go. Then we have The Freshman, Marlon Brando, Matthew Broderick. Uh, Matthew playing still a, almost like a young man, finding a job with uh, like the mafia, but uh, he doesn't know it. Like Marlon Brando, Marlon, Marlon Brando playing on his role as the Don, you know, kind of like a, a satire a little bit, but it's uh, probably the last time he was actually good in a movie, like from top to bottom. It's really well done, and it's uh, all shot in New York, of course. So that's the added bonus. But yeah, the freshman right here. Then we have 
Friday, Doughboy, Ice Cube, Chris Tucker, um, you know, a hood comedy. Who hasn't seen uh, Friday? And also, you know, its sequel next Friday. And then the Christmas movie, which I don't have. And uh, they were working on, uh, Ice Cube was working on a fourth one, but then John Witherspoon, who played the father of Ice Cube in the movie, died late last year. So we're not too sure. We're not too sure if we're going to do another one. That would be pretty cool, but, uh, you know, we don't know. We don't know. Up next, the Friday the 13th movies. I, haven't, I still haven't got the Blu-rays. I should. Been lazy about it, but I just love this cover right here. Like, I just... Just for that alone, I, I'm going to keep it, but for sure I will upgrade, you know, at some point. Then we have Friday the 13th Part 2, right here, as you can see. Then Friday the 13th Part 3, and uh, with uh, the version in 3D, where you get the, uh, you know, get stabbed in the face, <laughs> right here. Then Friday the 13th, the final chapter. With that really cool cover right here. There you go. Then part five, a new beginning. Then the covers get less. That's like, they should have used like the original artwork, but they did not. So there you go. Excuse me. Then part six, Jason Lives right here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then Part eight, Jason takes Manhattan. So yeah, missing a few right here. And uh, of course, Jason takes Manhattan for like what? 15, 20 minutes towards the end of the movie. Most of the movie happens on a boat. So it's kind of a bait and switch kind of kind of deal with this one. But uh, it's pretty cool to see him walk around, you know, Times Square. Uh, that is, a, that would have been an unforgettable view. People there seeing it. So uh, there you go. All right, then we have Fright Night, the very old DVD, again, uh, wanted to get, I know the Arrow video version, I wanted to get the Steelbook, but it sold out, uh, I'm sure someone will release it once again, like the 15th version of it, but, uh, you know, another classic 80s horror right here, Fright Night, then we have The Frighteners, Peter Jackson, Michael J. Fox, that's actually one of my favorite of his, uh, Peter and Michael, uh, shot in New Zealand, uh, the effects in this is really good, and it's probably the only Michael J. Fox movie, like, uh, sure, there's comedy, but, you know, there's touches of horror, and it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's something that's a real downer and shit, but uh, it's, I think it's really good. It's really good right here. I love that poster. Love that poster. Uh, up next, From Dust Till Dawn. Again, I want to get uh, some sort of Blu-ray for this one, because it's... Uh, it is bad shit, you know, it's pure, uh, like a Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino teaming up for the first time and uh, just really love it. You even get like Fred Williamson, this lot of like uh, exploitation people from the 70s show up in this. Um, I mean, who haven't seen this? You should, you should see it. Come on. Then, another Tim Burton from hell, Johnny Depp. Heather Graham, right here, from, uh, there you go, Jack the Ripper movie, then the fugitive Harrison Ford, I didn't kill my wife, he exclaims in this movie, and it's a whole chase during the, the, the whole movie, another movie I saw in theaters on opening day, August 1993, Good Times, Andrew Davis is one of the best, uh, one of the best like action movie director of the 90s with this and Under Siege. I did the Chain Reaction. He did a few um, Chuck Norris movies in the 80s, Steven Seagal. So it's a shame he's not working anymore unless he's dead and I don't know it. But uh, yeah, another Chevy Chase, Funny Farm. That is a, a classic chase right here. Love this one. Uh, they get a farm, crazy shit happens, everything breaks down, it tests the, the marriage of him and uh, the, the, his wife in the movie was played by uh, Madeline Smith, but uh, it's, a, it's a charming little movie, a fun Sunday afternoon watch, if, uh, yeah, it's worth, it's worth checking out. 
Then we have Zafuri, Brian De Palma, uh, Michael, no Michael, uh, <laughs> Kirk Douglas is in this. And he was already like 70 in this. So it's crazy. That man has always been old. He's always been old. Oh, you, you have. That is so cool. I, I'm actually planning a, a trip to Vermont next uh if not the next next six months probably next year but uh, you'll have to let me know where those locations are because i would be down to see this but anyway um you know a uh, kind of like um he followed carrie with this uh, a film about psychic and uh i know the like john cassavetti's in this and charles durning andrew stevens plays his son good times good times then we have effects, Brian Brown, Brian Dennehy, may he rest in peace, the two Brians. There you go, the two Brians. Um, great, uh, kind of like a MacGyver type situation where his, um, he's pretty good with, uh, well, he's a special effects artist, so he can get out of any situations. And uh, I think it's pretty good. I actually prefer the sequel to this, which I actually saw in theaters as well, FX2 right here really really fun movies there we go david fincher the game uh michael douglas and then we have uh sean penn playing his brother in the movie kind of a, a mind fuck of a movie you know he plays to play in this game because he's a he's a bored white man a bored rich white man he wants to spice things up and then uh pays to have a, a crazy adventure and uh, he gets it and he surely gets it in this one there we go then we have gang related james belushi tupac shakur nice little steel book right here this was uh, shakur's last uh, on-screen performance in the last movie that was released of his then we have the garbage pale kids movie I know there's a Shout Factory version of this. I have not seen it. I've seen clips of this. I know it looks weird as fuck. Someone took a lot of drugs before making these movies. <laughs> so there you go. Then another great sci-fi movie. Uh, Gattaca, Ethan Hawke, Uma Thurman. The movie where they met up on... Uh, and uh, had a baby <laughs> that a kid i don't know she's uh, what's her face she's on uh, stranger things now the last season but a great sci-fi movie about uh, you know splicing genes and cloning and all that good shit uh andrew nichols directed this uh it's really good really good then we have a tv movie the last ninja which i briefly talked in my uh last collection update uh, it's a TV movie. It's basically The Last Ninja because uh, the early 80s there was a craze about all things ninja and uh, recently I got The Master with uh, Lee Van Cleef. But this one stars Michael Beck of The Warriors and uh, yeah it should have been uh, it aired on ABC but it should have been a series but didn't get picked up but we got the DVD instead. So let's all be glad we got that. Then Gator, Burt Reynolds, exploitation movie. Uh, this is the first, uh, the first of two. The other one being, what is the other one? I'm, I'm, uh, White Lightning is that the one? The other, the sequel, I believe it is. But yeah, Burt Reynolds at his uh, at his peak of his of his fame, you know, playing suave, cool, cool people. There you go, Gator. Then we have. Galaxy Quest, Tim Hallen, Sigourney Weaver, Alan Rickman. Classic, classic 90s comedy. One of the best. Uh, recently, Fandom, the website, they did a documentary on this one. And if you're a fan of the movie, I would highly suggest watching it. It, uh, it brought me back. Uh, it's just uh, one of those, like, I want to say perfect movie, but it's become pretty damn close. Pretty damn close. It's better than most of the Star Trek movies that came in during that time. So, so yeah, if you've not seen this, Galaxy Quest right here, worthy of checking out. Then, The Gateway. Alec Baldwin, Kim Basinger, 
James Wood, Michael Madsen, a uh, remake of the Sam Peckinpah movie of the 70s. We get to see more Kim Basinger naked in this. And she was married to Alec Baldwin at the time. So we get to see them, you know, really getting on, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, and this was directed by uh, Roger Donaldson. So there we go. Other 90s flick. One of the biggest horror movie of the late 2010s, Get Out. There you go. Who doesn't have Get Out in their movie collection? If you're a horror fan, you know. That's it. Everyone got this one. Get out. Get out. Then Get Shorty. John Travolta. The movie did right after uh, Pulp Fiction. And it was a wise choice because uh, it's a one-two punch with Pulp Fiction in this one. Uh, Barry Sonnenfeld directed this uh, movie about uh, the ins and outs of Hollywood. You know, you've seen this. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna tell you, but it's a, it's a classic. How about some... Marvel movies, but you know, not the ones people like. <laughs> Ghost Rider, Nicolas Cage. Uh, this one was directed by the Neville Dean brothers. No, not brothers, but just uh, partners. Uh, they did, uh, or was it this one they did? Or no, this one is uh, Mark Steven Johnson. So, no, I think it's the sequel. But yeah, you know, Nicolas Cage as a ghost skull running on a bike right here. And then I got the sequel right here. Which is done by, is it done by the Neville Dean brothers? Yes, Neville Dean Taylor, there you go, who did the uh, Crank movies. So you see a little bit of that crankness uh, in that one. Uh, there you go, right here. Then some Jarmouche, Ghost Dog, The Way of the Samurai, Live by the Code, Die by the Code, uh, for Swidaker. Who actually train you know in all things uh, samurai-ish <laughs> um, it's uh, like like East meets West in this hip-hop infused samurai gangster pick uh, with uh, yeah it's uh, the, the, the first with a curve who else is in this many more people but you know there you go some code red ghost keeper this is uh, Can Exploitation, early 80s, uh, shot on the cheap. Uh, I've yet to see it, but, uh, and it's um, kind of like horror in, um, all the, it all happens like in a house in the dead of winter. And uh, I've heard good things. So that's why uh, I blind bought it. And also it's Can Exploitation. And that's kind of, that's, uh, that's my jam right here. I'm trying to get everything that's Can Exploitation. Then we have some John Carpenter with Ghost of Mars, which I need to get the uh, Mill Creek version, uh, the Blu-ray, Ice Cube, Natasha Enstridge, uh, Pam Greer's in this, uh, Jason Statham, you know, they're on Mars, crazy aliens on this thing, um, it's horror, it's fun, you know, I feel like it's underseen, so there you go. Then we have Sam Raimi, with the gift, uh, Giovanni Ribisi, Keanu Reeves, uh, Katie Holmes, who plays like a, uh, was it like a, she has like a gift of some kind, I can't remember, or is it, uh, to, to Blanchett, no, it's Ken Blanchett, we like, she can foresee the future, that's right, she's a teller of some kind, and that's the movie mostly known for, you know, seeing uh, Katie, Katie Holmes twins, <laughs> so there you go. A Canadian horror, I won't say classic, but you know, well known. Ginger Snaps. Uh, my God, this DVD is uh, is old. And but yeah, there you go, Ginger Snaps, right here. One of my personal favorite late nineties. Um, I want to say action comedy, I guess. Go from uh, the director of Swingers uh, again, Katie Holm in this, and uh, Timothy Oliphant. Uh, and then we have Jay Moore, which is one of my favorites. Uh, just a, a night, it's like a, one of those, uh, it all happens in one night uh, comedy. Uh, it has, uh, you know, dashes of Pulp Fiction-esque thing. The soundtrack is pretty killer. So yeah, worth checking out if you haven't. God told me to, Larry, F uh, Larry Flint, <laughs> Larry Cohen. Um, 
about a crazy person that kills people and uh, all he hears in his head is uh, God told me to to do this so it's uh, it's Larry Cohen so you know it's automatically good anything Larry Cohen does touches right direct uh, I'm in for and uh, this is one of the good ones right here God told me to then a comedy from the early 2000s the goods with Jeremy Piven playing a uh, dealership car a car dealership owner and uh, it's pretty damn funny and it's written by uh, and directed by Neil Brennan who co-created the Chappelle show so right there if you're a fan of the Chappelle show and you haven't seen the goods um, I always suggest you check it out then we have the good son Macaulay Culkin you know crazy kid from hell you know stirring shit up a bit of evil bastard um, yeah it's pretty good pretty good and uh, playing uh, Elijah Wood is like a young Elijah Woods in this as well my god I, I know I saw this in theaters I remember flashes of it but I, I remember it, it being pretty pretty good another good movie Goodwill Hunting right here there you go then classic 80s the Goonies I should oh my I should get the blu-ray of this it's like one of my favorite 80s movies Richard Donner but look at this artwork my god that's I think that's why I kept this the DVD because the other ones they don't have this and uh, recently on YouTube uh, there, there was a Goonies reunion they got mostly all of the casts I mean the, the people that are still alive uh, it's a it's Josh Josh Gad that uh, hosted the show it's uh, fuck I can't remember the name but it's uh, it's a show about nostalgia and stuff check it out it's a pretty good reunion if you're into the Goonies then a blind buy with Gorp which is a early 80s sex comedy with uh, Michael Lembeck Dennis Quaid Fran Drescher's in this so yeah American International release this Gorp got the Gorp then how about a slasher movie graduation day right here um, I believe it is uh, yeah vinegar syndrome it came out in 1981 right here then how about some prints with graffiti bridge uh, I've yet to see it uh, I've, I've not heard good things have you seen graffiti bridge I mean uh, what do you do after purple rain right like it's uh, it's uh, but uh, and I believe did he direct this yeah he wrote and directed this so yeah there you go Prince and graffiti bridge and finally finally for this uh, shelf number six we have Grand Canyon Lawrence Kasdan film uh, hell of a cast Danny Glover Kevin Klein Steve Martin Mary McDonnell it's uh, all it's all um, sp time spent in Los Angeles you know rich white people having rich white problems <laughs> existential crisis they float in and out of their lives it's uh, Lawrence Kasdan so it's that kind of movie he did but it's pretty dang good Steve Martin's actually pretty damn good in this one so yeah, if you're into those kind of movies, I would highly suggest checking out Grand Canyon. And you know what? That is it, folks. That is it for shelf number six. Thank you for sticking around this long for this. Um, shelf number seven should be next week. If somehow you want to see this again, I'll be posting this on my YouTube channel uh, either tomorrow or Friday. And I got a few reviews coming up pretty soon. So check back for that as well. Thanks for watching and uh, have a good night. Bye bye now.